other's hearts Cause each other pain How we take each other's love Without thinking anymore Forgetting Some things take so long How do I explain Not too many people Think we're all the same And because of all those surrounds them Oh, isn't it a pity Isn't it a pity How we break each other's hearts Cause each other pain Forgetting to give Forgetting to Isn't it a pity? Good morning. <laughs> welcome to the First Unitarian Church of Hamilton. We welcome you here in the sanctuary, as well as those who have opted to join us online this morning. Please ensure that your electronic devices are on vibrate or mute. My name is Irene Kay, my pronouns, pronouns are she, her, and I'm this morning's service leader. I want to take, thank today's service team, which includes our worship assistants, Sue Johnstone and Ian Johnstone, our ushers, Jean Jacobs and Doreen Knoll, our intrepid tech team, Joshua McIntyre, <laughs> Eamon Bullock, Chase Tapley, and John Elliott. Our storyteller this morning is Sheila Van Loosden, and our music minister is George Zabaris. We also have two guest speakers this morning, Ellen Pappenberg and Jim Sonnes. Jim Sonnes has been a Unitarian for more than 60 years. He moved around starting at First Church in Toronto, Don Heights, Northwest, Unicamp, Guelph, Alora Fergus, Grand River, and now Stratford. <laughs> he initiated, he initiated, instigated the Bean Project over 30 years ago and using his contacts has raised money to send the beans to food banks around Ontario. Ellen Pappenberg has been his inspiration and sidekick for over 40 years. I don't have any regular announcements, but I do have a special announcement from Mary Ellen Scannon. She was up at her cottage, or is up at her cottage, and she was sitting there smelling the wood smoke from the wildfires and she is uh, part of the climate action team, and she felt moved to make this announcement. In late spring, the climate action team launched a summer of action, 
We invited the congregation to take on individual or household actions to reduce fossil fuel use or adapt to changing conditions. We did not know that the summer would bring the climate emergency right to the door of people across, Ontario, across Canada and around the world. Record-setting heat, drought, rampant wildfires, intense smoke, extreme weather and floods. These events are taking lives and destroying property, as well as natural habitat on land and in the waters. It's tempting to suggest that if the worst has already begun, why bother taking actions? What's the point? The point is that as more communities act and influence decision makers, we gather energy and inspire others. Peter Gabriel wrote, don't give up because you have friends. Don't give up, you're not beaten. Don't give up, I know you can make it good. She finishes by saying, don't give up, keep taking action. In the fall, we can all learn from each other and keep on marching forward. Our chalice lighting words this morning are by Eric Williams. It's called, this, There is a Light. In the beginning, there was light, infinite and expansive, flowing out from an unseen center. Throughout creation, there is light, from the steady sun, the glowing moon, the flashing meteor, the twinkling stars, and the auroras dancing in the northern skies. Within each part of creation, there is light, slowed down and held close by every cell and molecule, by each atom and element. Within you there is light, the same light as the source, the same radiance that is in all creatures. Please join me in our chalice lighting words. We welcome you here today, whatever the circumstances of your life, in the many ways we identify as people and in the diversity of how we love and live. In this house of faith, we are all included as we search for truth, build our community, and strive to make the world a better place for all. We are not the first people on this land, nor will we be the last. We acknowledge our connection to the web of all existence honoring the past and preparing for the future. The stewardship of the original people who lived here preserved this place for our generation. We seek to be respectful stewards of this place for those who follow. And I'm going to call on Jim to give us our call to worship. Thank you. Well, I've been here before. It's very familiar. I've talked about my beans, and I've had help from several of your members uh, who come to Unicamp and pick up the beans there and bring them down to Camelton and so forth. Anyway, uh, the call to worship today uh, is by Gary, Reverend Gary Kowalski, and I've known him uh, for about 35, 40, yeah, 35 years, I guess, as the president of Yafita. Uh, Yafita is the Unitarian Universalist for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. It's now known as UUAM, Unitarian Universalist for Animal Ministry. He's a UU minister in New Mexico and another author of several books about animals and spirituality. Originally, our Bean Project was to be a Yafita project, but we needed a church to sponsor it in Canada to keep our to give the necessary tax receipts. So all our relations by Reverend Kerry Kolowski. Our time is short here on the earth. Around us swirl immensities of time and space, a universe infinite in all our directions. How small our hopes and cares seem amid the panorama of creation. Yet we are not separate from the cosmos, but have evolved and grown out of it like leaves of a tree or the waves upon a sea, 
and our thoughts are its thoughts. Our lives, our manifestations are never ending vitality. Our spirits a microcosm of beauty and creativity of the whole. Fill us then with the reverence and compassions for all who are, who are our kin, cloud and sun, sibling and cousin, the multitude of beings who shall this improbability and never to be repeated at moment, all expressions like ourselves of the mind at large, the spirit at play, the dynamis, dynam, dynamism at work, in whom we live and more, and whom we never know. choreography going on up here. <laughs> um, we have uh, recorded hymns this morning and our first hymn will be hymn 1028, The Fire of Commitment. Number 1028, The Fire of Commitment. <laughs> When Graham went to the vegetable patch, Joe came too. It was nearly winter.
Now's digging time, said Graham. And she picked up her spade and dug that ground into big old lumps. Joe dug too. He made a hole and a heap and a squashy place for sculching it. And the good brown earth got on with doing what the good brown earth does best. Next time Graham went to the vegetable patch, Joe came too. And there was snow on the ground. Joe ran and jumped and slid and whooped. Graham stood and looked. Now's thinking time, said Graham, thinking about all the things in her gardening book. Joe thought too. He thought up a snowman. Next time Graham went to the vegetable patch, Joe came too. And there was spring in the air. Now's planting time, said Graham, and she raked out the loose earth, smooth as breadcrumbs, and planted seeds in long, straight rows. Joe planted too. Lots of seeds, here, there, and who knows where. And the good brown earth got on with doing what the good brown earth does best. Next time Graham went to the vegetable patch, Joe came too, and the birds were singing, and the trees were flowering, and the rain and the sun were chasing each other across the sky. Now's watching time, said Graham, keeping an eye on those hungry birds, and she made a scarecrow and stuck it in the ground. Joe watched too. Graham, Graham, he shouted. There are green spikes coming up. Next time Graham went to the vegetable patch, it was green all over. Now's weeding time, said Graham. And she picked up her long-handled hoe and grubbed up all those weeds between her vegetable rows. Joe pulled up a few weeds too. At least he hoped they were weeds. <laughs> and he rolled in the long grass and sang. Next time Graham and Joe went to the vegetable patch, it was hot, hot, hot. The plants were drooping and the earth was dry. Uh-oh, said Graham, now's watering time. And she hooked up the hose and the old tap and ran it on the plants sweet as rain. Joe watered too, mainly himself, uh, and he gave Graham the second ripe strawberry. <laughs> Soon, Joe's ma and pa took the whole family to the beach, and Graham and Joe went too. Now's resting time, said Graham, stretching out for a snooze. The sun shone and the breeze blew. And the good brown earth got on with doing what the good brown earth does best. Day after golden day until... The next time Graham went to the vegetable patch and Joe came too, of course, what did they find? Oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow! There were Graham's plants standing tall and ripe and lush.
And there was Joe and Pig, Higgly Piggly, tangly, fantastic. Joe jumped up and down and hugged and hugged and hugged his own gram tight. But what? But how? But who? asked Joe. Graham hugged him back. You'd have to ask the good brown earth, she said. Then she took her long pronged fork and opened up the ground and there were pale brown potatoes like buried treasure and carrots and parsnips and beets. Now's gathering time, said Graham, filling her basket. And Joe gathered too, beans and greens, ladybugs and grasshoppers, <laughs> dandelions and fat tomatoes. He ate so many blackberries that purple juice ran all down his chin. And when they'd finished gathering, Graham and Joe loaded up the wheelbarrow and set off home ready for feasting time. And the good brown earth got on with doing what the good brown earth does best. Uh, I don't see any children up out here for us to sing out. Are there any children? Nobody? Okay. <clears throat> All right, uh, so, George, we're not singing the children <laughs> Thank you, Sheila. <clears throat> now is our time to get quiet. In these moments of contemplation, <clears throat> I invite you to relax, close your eyes if you like, and breathe deeply. Following our reading, there will be a few moments of silence, followed by some music. During the music, you're welcome to come up and light a candle for a joy or concern. This morning's reading is also written by Gary Kowalski, Reverend Gary Kowalski, and it's called Grateful for Creatures from A to Z. Oops, A to Z. Spent so many years in the States, sorry. <laughs> we give thanks for the earth and its creatures and are grateful from A to Z for alligators, apricots, acorns, and apple trees, for bumblebees, bananas, blueberries, and beagles, coconuts, crawdads, cornfields, and coffee, daisies, elephants, and flying fish, for groundhog, glaciers, and grasslands, hippos and hazelnuts, icicles, and iguanas, for juniper, jackrabbits, and june bugs, Kudzo and kangaroos, lightning bugs and licorice. For mountains and milkweed and mistletoe, narwhals and nasturtiums, otters and ocelots. For peonies and persimmons and polar bears, quahogs and Queen Anne's lace. For raspberries and roses, salmon and sassafras, tornadoes and tulip wood urchins and valleys and waterfalls, yaks and yams and yogurt. We are grateful, good earth, not least of all, for zinnias, zucchini, and zebras, and for the alphabet of wonderful things that are as simple as ABC.
In the free faith tradition, we are the support and resources of this congregation. Our gifts and donations sustain the many ministries of this church, a community that we have chosen to join and support. We will now receive our offering while we listen to our music minister. <laughs> Sorry, George. <laughs> Was there sound on that last song? Yeah? Okay. Uh, all right. I can't really hear myself in the monitor, though. This song's about money. It's appropriate. Once I lived my life like a millionaire Spent my money without a care Showed my friends a mighty fine time Bought bootleg liquor, champagne and wine Then I began to fall so low Lost all my friends, had no place to go If I had a dollar again Hold on to it till that old eagle grins Oh, nobody knows you When you're down and out In your pocket, not a penny And as for friends, you ain't got any When you're on your feet again Everybody wants to be your long lost friend Isn't it strange without a doubt Nobody knows you when you're down and out. Oh, nobody knows you when you're down and out. In your pocket, not a penny And as for friends, well, you ain't got any When you're on your feet again Everybody wants to be your long-lost friend Isn't it strange without a doubt Nobody knows you Nobody knows you Nobody knows you When you're down and out Your gifts in support of our ministries to one another and to the community are very appreciated. Thank you. And now we'll have a speech by Ellen and Jim. Good morning. We all know the jokes about beans. After promoting our beans project to Unitarians for over 30 years, I think I've heard them all. And no, I am not a bean farmer. The fact of the matter is, beans are good for your health, good for the planet, and good for your pocketbook. One dollar donated to the project will buy a kilo of beans, which is about that much. It's actually more than that, but this is the amount that I recommend that anybody should cook at a time, because it's good for a week and you can get a lot of meals out of it. One dollar donated to the Bean Project uh, will produce a kilo of beans for the, for the uh, food bank. We distribute them in 25 kilo bags. 
we have a very expensive labeling system. <laughs> Make sure that we have the red ones and the green ones and the black ones and whatever. Notice, uh, if you buy these beans in the supermarket, they cost about two fifty a pound in a little bag. But if you buy them, or if you put them in cans, it's even more expensive. And then they got to open the cans one by one if they're in a soup kitchen. And you can imagine how much work it is opening up twenty-five cans of beans to make a pot of soup. Our beans are grown right here in Ontario. The farmers receive the commodity cost of the beans and the Grand River Bean Company in Paris, Ontario donates the cost of cleaning, the processing and bagging the beans. Ellen will say something about our history and her involvement and I'll explain how, later how you can contribute to the project. Thank you, Jim. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm going off script just for a moment. Uh, because the person talking about uh, at her cottage uh, seeing the smoke, uh, we are amateur astronomers as well, and we notice the smoke a lot in the sky, in the night sky. It is ruining uh, <laughs> a lot of the vision, and you can see it. And nowadays you can even smell it too, because it is, uh, and it comes from so far too. It's uh, incredible. So we've seen it for years already, and uh, very concerning. Uh, I am from Amsterdam originally. I'm here for four, 40 years, and we got to know each other with the solar eclipse that Jim organized uh, for 100 people to, uh, to go to in uh, several places. He wanted me to come to uh, Siberia, but he's also he was a book publisher for... Uh, astronomy and other books, Canadian books. And um, anyway, that's how we got to know each other. And uh, I went to Indonesia uh, as, as a tour leader of, uh, of, of a group of 25. Uh, we had four, four groups in the 100. And uh, we saw the solar eclipse, it was fantastic. So that is how we got to know each other. We fell in love. And, the rest is history to make a very long story very short. <laughs> but that is why I'm here. I never thought I would leave my country and now I'm a Canadian as well. So uh, Jim got me really involved with Unitarians and, uh, and, and social action. And uh, in the late 80s, the local churches in Toronto were looking for a donation to supply uh, the food banks with turkeys for Christmas. Uh, most members of the Social Action Committee of the Northwest uh, Unitarian Fellowship we were uh, members of uh, were vegetarian. So instead of uh, supplying turkeys, it was decided to offer beans as a low cost, much overlooked and underrated, excellent source of protein. The colored bean uh, growers of Ontario, and believe it or not, there was also a White Bean Growers Association, <laughs> agreed, uh, it's, now, it's now one organization, by the way, <laughs> agreed to match our donation and gave us the address of Grand River Beans in Paris, Ontario. Uh, we went there thinking we would get 200 pounds of uh, beans for our hundred dollars and we ended up with 400 pounds well that was quite a load at the time <laughs> a little Volkswagen Beetle. yeah that too <laughs> but that was only the beginning our congregation came together and we made up uh, festive bags of beans because this was for Christmas and, and for, for families with recipes and spices for bean chili and donated these to our food bank. You know, little ribbons about it. And the whole congregation took part in doing this. It was such a big project. Anyway, the, the food bank thanked us and uh, said in future they would prefer 
uh, to bag the beans themselves uh, for distribution. <laughs> so I said, okay, that's fine, because <laughs> that was a big relief for our committee and the church. <laughs> So it was quite a, a job to lugging the beans around and backing them up and taking them to, to the food bank. So we were glad about that. Uh, but we have since been fundraising for Ontario grown non-GMO, uh, genetically modified, no, no genetically modified beans, uh, to be delivered to the local food banks for over 35 years now. And uh, at some point, due to Jim's effort and persistence, being surpassed the peanut, peanut butter as the most uh, requested commodity in the Toronto Daily uh, Bread Food Bank. And for this feat, Jim was interviewed uh, on CBC Radio by Andy Barry, if you still remember him, uh, about 25 years ago. Uh, so that was kind of fun. <laughs> And the next few years, the project expanded to other Unitarian churches in Southern Ontario, including Hamilton. And you said, we don't want those beans anymore. We just will pay. <laughs> and uh, so, so they paid uh, for, uh, by the church. And soon after, everybody requested, we take them to the food bank uh, uh, directly. So that's what we did. Meanwhile, we moved to Drayton. Never heard of this, probably. It's in the middle of you do. Okay, good. Uh, in the middle of nowhere, and the Drayton Festival Theater st started there, and they have now seven theaters all over the place. Uh, very popular. And uh, we lived there for 23 years. Uh, the Alora Fergus UU Church took the Beam Project under their wings with us as the organizers. And at the peak of the bean drive, uh, we delivered 70,000 pounds of beans in one year to the Toronto Daily food, Bread Food Bank in one ton totes by tractor trailers and even sent beans as far away as Montreal and Vancouver. We had trucking companies donate the transportation, a whole other project. Uh, then, consequentially, <laughs> It was a sad thing, but Jim personally was damaged by the beans. They attacked him. No, <laughs> not quite. In 2005, he got a hernia, lifting the 100, at the time, 100-pound bags and in a delivery to Toronto. He, he lost a, a load of the bags and had to reload them. So that was quite shocking. And I wasn't with him at the time. Uh, that slowed down our project, and we basically did not send out as many large shipments as before, but we did continue. Uh, the pandemic, of course, slowed our fundraising, and we just kept collecting money into the Bean account, and we basically did not send out as many large shipments as before. And locally in Drayton, where we lived uh, 23 years, as I said, we kept a supply of 4,000 pounds of beans in our garage and donated them to the Mexican Mennonites, stop one in Toronto, Father Hernan of La, La Iglesia in San, Lor San Lorenzo, the San Lorenzo, and the Spanish-speaking, uh, which was the Spanish-speaking Anglican Church in Toronto. Uh, and they're still one of our people we uh, one of our designation that we sent our beans to. I went to St. Catharines, Elmira, Cambridge, and Hamilton, and uh, delivered by Unitarians who wanted to, who wanted, uh, to visit uh, Unicamp and would pick them up there to bring them back to the different churches. Some of your members did before. Uh, we don't recall the names, but I'm sure that some of you might remember that. Um, Meanwhile, the Toronto Food Bank made their own arrangements with the uh, uh, bean growers, and so we could slow down our fundraising a bit. They did their own fundraising, and they made their own arrangements and, uh, and, and transportation, so we, have, we didn't have to worry about that anymore because it was quite a big load and to fundraise for. Uh, interestingly, Many food banks had originally no clue what to do with the beans, dry beans, you know, what do you do with them? 
So, so we would include the instructions how to handle dried beans and it changed over decades with new immigrants arriving, needing beans and people getting more educated on nutrition. Since Jim and I moved to Kitchener eight years ago, we have delivered more than 30, over 30,000 pounds of dry beans to uh, food banks in southern Ontario. They redistributed these to uh, now 50 pound bags to local organizations, including again Toronto, Cambridge, Hamilton, Stratford, Elmira, St. Catharines, and Fergus. And meanwhile, we started uh, uh, the, the congregation in uh, Stratford, and they are pretty uh, autonomous now, having one service in a month and uh, they have taken us under their wing. So we created the demand in Waterloo region by talking with prominent institutional recipients. Uh, we don't have a car anymore. We did away with it for environmental reason and cost. And the uh, food bank agreed to provide the truck and driver to pick up the beans for us in Paris and store them locally for delivery to other food banks. Now, there are three reasons to replace animal protein with vegetable protein. Compassion, health, and the planet, the environment, right? So the greenhouse gas generated by factory farming represents over 50% of the problem of climate change. The transportation industry represents less than 20%, you know, all the transportation, cars, planes, everything. And just even cutting down on consumption of animal protein has a huge impact. Not to mention that 80% of uh, agricultural land is being used for animal feed. So we could take part of that land and plant forests in a responsible way so we don't have a risk of widespread forest fires and restore the wildlife. This would offset carbon emissions as well because trees will absorb carbon. So it's a win-win situation. We have a handout and you can find out how to help. The donations will be gratefully accepted with Stratford Unitarian Church Bean Project and tax receipts seats, uh, for over $10 donations will be issued. And since the pandemic, our fundraising has now really restarted. And uh, we delivered 2,000 pounds of black beans and 2,000 pounds of dark red kidney beans to the Cambridge Food Bank in March. We purchased these beans at cost from the farmers in Grand River Bean Company in Paris, Ontario. They have a huge warehouse with big silos where they uh, have the beans and they dry them, clean them and bag them at no cost to the food bank. And a donation of $25 cents, 25 kilogram bag, you know, like the one here. Fortunately, there's nothing in there, so I'm very strong, you see. <laughs> anyway, so that is, that's what you get. And, um, and then you can go to wherever your favorite food bank and you can give directions too if you want to say, oh, I would like to go, to go there or there. Uh, and now I give it back to Jim. Yeah, some people donate a fixed sum every month. That's why we would keep going during the pandemic. We kept on getting these checks automatically. It just worked out great. Some send a donation to the church, Mark for Beans, if you were made the arrangement with the treasurer. And then we get a one-time one payment to the food bank and make sure that the uh, amount goes to the local food bank, to Hamilton, or who, whoever it is. Uh, Otherwise, you can just send it to Stratford, uh, to the Stratford Unitarian Mark for Beans. We normally send the fresh dried beans to the food bank in March or April when they're mo available from the processor from the previous year. And often the food bank really appreciates them in March and April because they don't get as many donations then. 
but we collect the money before Christmas mostly. Uh, and what we do is send out a, what a press release, not a press release, a, a release to the churches and saying, our bean project's on, consider us instead of just sending cans and stuff to the food bank, consider sending money for the beans and we will send it to your food bank. Thank you for your attendance and attention. I brought some sample beans, little bags like this. And as I say, for a family of two, like us, of course, we're special. <laughs> we, we eat beans a lot. <laughs> so, you know, this will last us for a week, and we make them and have three or four meals out of it, including with my son. And you get a lot of nourishment from that, and it's so easy. What we often do is cook up the whole bunch, take half, eat them uh, proportionally, you know, mash sometimes or just straight beans. We take the other half and freeze them and put them in soup otherwise. Anyway, it's just a way of doing it. I brought some of these packages of beans. If you're interested in grabbing some, they're on the front there. And I can certainly uh, make sure you get some more bags of beans if you're interested in them. So, benediction. Thank you. I speak for all of us when I say thank you very much. Very entertaining talk and very useful. <laughs> uh, we'll sing our last hymn. That's going to be number 1064, Blue Boat Home. Number 1064, Blue Boat Home. This is an old hymn that has been reimagined um, with new words by Peter Mayer and the piano accompaniment by UU Minister of Music, Jason Shelton.
give us our benediction. This is about a starfish story that you probably have heard before. Uh, One Step Forward to Changing the World by Peter Straub. I find it doesn't hurt to be reminded uh, uh, of it uh, once in a while. So early one morning, an old man was talking along, uh, walking along the shore after a big storm in, had passed and found the fast beach littered with fa- starfish as far he could see. All starfish. Off in the distance, a small boy approached. As the boy walked, he paused every so often. As he grew closer, the man could see that he was occasionally bending down to pick up an object and throw it into the sea. The boy came close still, closer still, and the man called out, Good morning, may I ask what is it that you're doing? And the young boy paused, looked up and said, throwing starfish into the ocean. The tide has washed them upon the beach and they can't return to the sea by themselves. And when the sun gets high, they will die unless I throw them back into the water. The old man replied, but there must be tens of thousands of starfish on this beach. I'm afraid that you won't really be able to make much of a difference. The boy bent down, picked up yet another starfish and threw it as far as he could into the ocean. Then he turned, smiled and said, it made a difference for that one. (laughs) And the boy, uh, so like this boy, we all have the opportunity to help create positive change. You might not be able to change the entire world, but at least you can change a small, part of it, and beans as a source of protein in just one meal instead of animal protein. One meal at a time. And thought to that animal that is spared its life, it can make a world of difference and for the planet too. Thank you. something in my monitor. One, two, three, four. Hey, 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 hey. As I walk through this wicked world, searching for darkness of insanity I ask myself is our hope lost is there only pain and hatred misery cause each time I feel like this inside there's one thing I want to know what's so funny about peace love and understanding Oh, what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Yeah! As I walked on through troubled times, my spirit gets so downhearted sometimes. So where are the strong, and who are the trusted, and where is the harmony, sweet harmony, cause each time I feel it slipping away, just makes me want to cry, what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding, 
So where are the strong? You got it. And who are the trusted? And where is the harmony? Sweet harmony. Cause each time I feel it slipping away just makes me wanna cry. What's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Oh, what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Oh, what's so fun about peace, love, and understanding? Yeah! Thank <laughs> you.